And in the woods, we also have a uh, eastern box turtle. So if you put your eyes out for that, you might see one. What is that? It's just like a, it looks like a tortoise. About that big. Oh, this? This is just an outside, outside classroom we have. So, so it's a type of wintergreen. We have another type of wintergreen in here. And that's the one I prefer to show off more. You can take the leaves, rip them open, and it smells just like wintergreen gum or wintergreen mints because that's where the original flavor used to come from with that plant. And it actually came from the berries on the plant. They have these red berries, and if you eat them, they kind of feel like styrofoam, but they taste just like wintergreen gum or some people will still take it, dry it out, make tea with it. You can, uh, you can make like an aftershave with it if you use like rubbing alcohol or a very strong vodka and a little bit in it with a bunch of torn up leaves, let it sit for a few days, you can actually make a wintergreen smelling aftershave. Mm. All right, so that's, that's one of the really cool ones I like in here. I haven't seen it too much yet, but. So this is a different type of wintergreen over here, this one? Yeah, it still has a little bit of a scent, but it's just not as powerful. Yeah, we have brown and red bats. They're both about that big. Red bats are a little bit smaller. Red bats are more migratory in the area, but uh, they're both doing echolocation, both eating the same foods. They will both live in bat boxes. The only real difference between them is that coloration. And it's not even a bright red. It's like a rusty, darkish reddish brown. It's like, it's like an autumn color, right? Yeah. So we'll build homes for bluebirds because a lot of the squirrels, if a bluebird makes his nest in a tree, a squirrel will get in there and steal his nest, or a raccoon, possum. So we try to do bluebird boxes because the hole's small enough that only a bluebird can get in. Issue we've been having is squirrels will sit there and chew the wood away to make the hole bigger so that they can then crawl inside. And woodpeckers too, we've seen woodpeckers sit there and peck away at the hole until it's big enough so they can fit in. Now these bushes here with the smaller leaves than the uh, sweet pepper. So all this right here, uh, some more in the middle. That's all actually blueberry bush. So if you come out here in late summer, the blueberries should be ripe. And I'll walk around, you can actually eat them. They're not as sweet as the blueberries you buy at the store. And they're also not as big. They're smaller and they're much more sour. Still good though, I think they taste fine. And right up here is where you can see the eagle's nest, and right there is where the osprey was before. So, where is the eagle's nest? The eagle's nest is straight across from us. It's like across the water, you're saying? Yeah. Oh, okay. Steps so up close, it's definitely like the sand and the clay. But then I think out there, I can't tell if it just gets deeper or if it's uh, like something affected by the algae bloom where we had a bloom of like plant life too. We could go down and check if you want. And so we did pretty much once a week in the summer and they'll take out whatever caterpillars they find so we can put them on display. And then we raise them from caterpillar to monarch. It takes about a week, week and a half. After that, we tag them which is like a little sticker we just stick right on their wing and we let them free and when they then when they migrate down to Mexico if that caterpillar gets found they can look at the tag number and then they can look at what we recorded so where it's from if it was male or female when it hatched when we released it all that information we keep down so that after it's found for a second time in Mexico they can find out how far it migrated and it gives an idea of how far around the world these butterflies are coming to meet in Mexico and then we'll head down to the uh which are non-venomous, but then we also have garter snakes, milk snakes, black rat snakes. We have eastern ringneck snakes, which are about that big purple with an orange stripe around their neck. Oh, wow. So they're really cool looking. The really added here are the ones around the perimeter on the dam. And 
through all the uh, all that dirt. You know, all the dirt they dug up. They just stacked it around the perimeter and put rocks on top of it for a couple tarps. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 